He argues it was actually tried, it didn't work, it resulted in power cuts by freezing the bill. Surely the government coming out and saying we're going to put billions of pounds of investment into supporting families that are quite hard pressed with their energy bills, that is the maximum you could do, the government would argue, to actually support people during this difficult time with one of the largest expenditures families have. Are you taking a massive risk by advocating freezing energy bills if you come to power post 2015? No, I don't think so. The fact of the matter is this is a failing market. Okay, It's a market created by uh, governments of old um, and it's a market that has been comprehensively failing uh, its consumers uh, for many, many years. Um, and uh, th the point I would make uh, is that uh, the energy companies will say to you uh, and, they'll, uh, and they'll raise us, uh, you know, the fear of power cuts and so on, but they'll say that, look, you know, this is all about the international uh, price of energy. But the fact of the matter is uh, that the cost of energy on the international market goes up and people's bills go up. The cost uh, on the international market comes down and your bills still go up. Um, frankly, I think it's, that is a ridiculous state of affairs and people feel that they're being conned. And the reality is, if the cost internationally is coming down but your bill's still going up, well, of course, you're going to feel like it's a con. If it looks like a con, smells like a con, it probably is a con. So we've got to actually get to grips with this market. We've got to be really serious about reform and that means actually tackling uh, some of the uh, claims made by the energy companies head on and saying frankly we know you're not doing a good enough job uh, by your consumers. People have to have gas and electricity in order to be able to live and we as a government uh, if we are the incoming government in 2015 are not going to be prepared to step back and just hope that somehow the market corrects itself and just before the break John said that if people want to actually fix their energy price, price and freeze it, there are products available. But the fact of the matter is, if you go online and you try and decipher and work your way through all of the different ways in which these products are marketed and explained to you, it's designed to lock you out. It's designed actually to make you feel like you practically need a degree just in energy price websites in order to work out what is or what isn't going to be a good deal for you. It, and it's particularly difficult that for people who are from vulnerable uh, uh, backgrounds, for pension you know, it's, it's indecipherable. People can't work that system out. It's designed to lock people out, and it's time it stopped. But it's not a superficial fear, though, is it, about power cuts, etc., because actually we're not saying that it is an argument that it has been tried in California. We know it has been tried in California. It didn't work. So why do you think the viewers, some viewers may ask, it would actually work here in this country? Surely Labour should come to power and look at simplifying the uh, market rather than looking at putting forth a blanket policy that could actually cause a huge amount of economic issues for us in the type of free market economy in which we operate. Well, look, we um, we are absolutely committed to reforming the market. We are re committed uh, to uh, the green agenda. This government, you never know from one day to the next whether they believe the green stuff is important or whether it's a bad word, which I won't use on this uh, this uh, TV uh, channel. Uh, so this government doesn't know what it's doing when it comes to uh, uh, the green economy um, and the green agenda. We're very clear that, for example, we're, we support a decarbonisation target for 2030. We, we, we know that this market needs certainty for investment to make sure that we uh, move into a new generation of renewable sources of energy. Uh, we absolutely believe in getting people's uh, energy usage down as much as possible as technology um, evolves. That's going to be ever more important. But the market itself, how you buy your energy, that has to change. And we are not prepared to step back and say it's okay for your bills to go up uh, and to keep on going up um, whilst we get the market sorted out. We tried to ask the big six companies to do it themselves. We tried that in government. We tried to let the market correct itself. It didn't. It's still failing. It's got to stop. John Hemming, one of the biggest uh, criticisms of the budget we have seen this week, looking at uh, issues from a more wider perspective, is that some argue it has very little by way of provision within it aimed at young people. And, of course, Labour has been quite vocal against uh, your government, saying that actually young people have been failed by this government in 
uh, very substantial way. Do you think that the Chancellor has failed to put enough provision well, for young people? We, we've put a lot of effort into increasing the numbers of apprentices, for instance. Um, and there's a, there's a political difference on apprentices, which is an interesting one. We, we, we are happy with there being what are called level two intermediate apprentices, um, level three, which are advanced, and level four, higher apprentices. There are in the country this year about half a million uh, young people who are on level two apprentices. That Labour don't think level two apprentices should exist, and um, that there should only be level three and level four. Now, I think Labour's view on this is wrong. I think it's reasonable to have the intermediate apprenticeship, um, uh, and that, that to get rid of those would be a really bad idea. And actually, at the end of the day, our objective is to get good careers for, for people, starting as young people, and as they get older, they become older people, and at some point become as old as me. Um, and then potentially quite a lot older. Um, but as they go through their careers, we want to get them into work. And the apprentice scheme is actually a really good scheme for that. And we've got about seven, 800,000 young people in, in that process. And I, I don't think the Labour Party should say to half a million people that you don't qualify as apprentice. I, I think that's very wrong. However, your apprenticeship scheme, the, the apprenticeship scheme that the government's been, been looking at, the various schemes that have actually come through have not been uh, free of criticism, have they? Because a lot of uh, people have come out to argue that actually apprenticeships that the government argue are there for young people are actually, and have been in the past, taken up by people who are far older. So actually, whilst you talk about yeah. getting young people trained up yeah. and with those skills, a lot of older people have actually been taken up those apprentices. And once well, the apprenticeships have actually concluded, the argument has been made, especially by your opposition, that uh, the likelihood of having a secure job through which young people can progress is, is quite limited and is quite well, questionable. I, I don't have the statistics as to precisely what age everybody is who's got a pretend apprenticeship. I happened to visit uh, in apprentice, Apprenticeship Week, which was about two or three weeks ago, I, I visited the, uh, one of the, the training centres in town, and all the people I saw there were younger people. But I, I don't think we should exclude people in their 30s necessarily and say they can't go into this process. You get people at times who are long-term unemployed. And if we've got a scheme to get them into work, that has to be a positive thing. Um, but no, no system is perfect. But what we're looking at is, is reductions in unemployment, reductions in youth unemployment. Um, that has to be a good thing. Shabana Mahmood, one of the most uh, significant uh, parts of the budget that we saw was, of course, the uh, discussion concerning national insurance, especially for those under the age of 21, and the fact that uh, employers won't have to uh, pay this under this government. John Hemming also argues that the government's been extremely proactive in putting forth uh, apprenticeship programs for the youth of this country, including people in your constituency, perhaps, uh, John would argue. Surely this is something that uh, Labour should be putting their backing behind rather than uh, criticising, as your party has been for uh, a number of years now. Well, I'm actually really glad you raised that point around national insurance and under 21-year-olds 21 year because it actually really neatly um, uh, captures exactly the wrong-headedness of uh, the approach of this government. So we all know we've got a problem in this country with youth unemployment. It is stubbornly still around the 900,000 um, mark. Um, it was, it's been nearly a million uh, for most of this parliament. That's not good enough. Um, frankly, that is a tragedy for the individuals um, uh, involved who can't get a job, but it's also a tragedy for the whole country country because we're missing out on the talents of our own young people and that is uh, something that we cannot allow to happen. So the question is, what do you do to try and right this uh, very real wrong? Um, we've said uh, that we will uh, have a tax on bankers' bonuses, which have been going up, and uh, even in the last few weeks, we've still seen more stories about how they're going up again this year. We will use that money to say to every single young person who's been out of year work for one year or more that they will be guaranteed a job through a wage subsidy program with employers to make sure that they get their first crack at uh, the real world of, an, uh, of employment, which we know makes a huge difference uh, to their chances from there on in. The government uh, has put forward its um, proposal that they will say to employers to encourage people to take on a young person, that if you take on someone who's 21 years or younger, that you will not have to pay national insurance uh, for that uh, employee, for that young employee. Now, we don't think that goes as far as our policy would, but it's a reasonable idea, and if they'd brought it forward, I'm sure we'd have uh, supported it. But 
what have they said? Youth unemployment is such an emergency in this country that this policy will not kick in until next April. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely complacent to think that young people can afford some